Good afternoon. Oh, good morning, everyone. Morning, Sis Lizzie. Morning, Miss Lizzie. How are you all doing? We are trying under this difficult situation. And how are you doing? Oh, no, me, I'm good. <laughs> That's great. Are we gonna start now? Is the recording started? Yes. Okay, so welcome to your other session where we learn skills on how to answer questions relating to your statistics, your basic statistics modules. Today's session, uh, we're going to do a little bit of content and then, because I'm going to show you so many other ways that you can use to answer the questions. Bear with me and let me know if you're getting lost in all the things that we will be doing. I will show you how to calculate manually as in like how to use formulas and do the calculations. I will show you how to use your scientific calculator to put your calculator to state mode and capture the data and do some calculation to answer the questions. I will also give you a template which I've already shared with you in the notes section. The template that you can use as well to do some calculations. So all these are just different ways that you can use. All I can say to you is find the best one that you will feel comfortable following or using because not all three are, are going to be complex because we're using complex calculations as well. But you need to practice and practice and practice in order for you to determine which way or which type of um, engagement you're going to use to answer or solve your um, or solve your uh, your regression questions. Can you please also make sure that your micro, your cameras and mics are muted? Just this, your camera is on. Thank you. Okay, so please make sure also to complete the register. The link is shared in the chat. Ah, uh, Chantal, the notes for today, sorry, I just realized I didn't share them yesterday, but they are uploaded um, on the notes section. Hi, uh, Lizzie. We, where we share all the notes for every Saturday. So you should have all the notes up to today. On, on the... Um, okay. On the team SharePoint side. Um, no, so for Saturday, I, yeah. I'm not sure which one you're referring to. On the teams, uh, on the Saturday classes, yeah. Where you joined, where you join the session, there is the always link. a link to say notes and recordings. That's where you will find today's notes. If you are in my e-Twitter group, 
that is a totally separate thing. So for today's session, the notes are shared on the uh, UNISA Western Cape Paro platform, right? Okay. The last one I'm getting is the chai squared. Okay. Under the schedule says, so I'm not sure if I'm not looking at the correct place, but I am checking under that link on the My Unisa link where you join the session for Teams. Yeah. And I'm not finding the last um, notes that were loaded were chai squared. So I'm not sure if it's just me or if everyone didn't see it. And you're telling me it's not loaded even mm -hmm. now. Huh, my bad. I thought I loaded it this morning. Should be there. Don't know why you're not seeing it because now it says when I try to upload it again, it says mm -hmm. replace or keep both. Um, it should have today's date. It should read as basic statistics skill session. Or probably because it says session eight. Mm, the last one here is September 2nd. Wait, it, it is there. It is there. Let me just rename it. Okay. And I'll grab it. Thank you. Is Lizzie? Yes. You said under notes recordings, and if you are under tutor, you are tutor, is your tutor what is You no, mentioned tutor. No, don't worry about that one. <laughs> it, you will okay. Let let me do this. Let me stop sharing so that everybody, especially those who don't know where to find the notes. And I'm going to share my entire screen. So when <clears throat> when you join your notes, you go when you join the session, you go to join session there. If you click on notes and recordings, it will open up a, a page like this. You scroll to numeracy center, you go to basic statistics and statistical matrices. When you click on it, it will open like this. There it says open class notes. And there will be recordings for all the sessions. You can see all the recordings that are there. If you click on this where it says open class notes, it will open a folder or a site with all the notes, all the notes will be there. There is the, the notes for today. Please make sure that you download it. There is a download button there. There is something wrong with my notes, Gethin. They look almost exactly the same. Let me just double check something. It might be my error on my site. Let's delete this one. I'll see if I can re-upload it. Okay. Let me just double check. Sorry, it's my bad. Mm. Yeah, you should have the latest version. Apologies for that. 
So they are the notes for today that we're going to go through. Got it, thank you. Yes, that should be. Then you can download that um, and also when you scroll down, there is a regression model exam um, example template. Please make sure also you just download by clicking on those three dots. There is a download. You can download that. We're going to use that template today as well. OK, without wasting more time. Let's go back to our presentation. <coughs> So today we're going to learn the basic skills to conduct the regression and also a correlation analysis. Uh, see my dates are not right. Um, the plan for the following week is to look at a revision of everything we have covered from semester one up until now. So we'll just do at a high level, looking at, I will just pick one past exam paper from one, uh, <clears throat> for what, from one of the modules, because you, if you realize you've got different modules, but I will bring all three modules, past exam papers, and then we will look at different ways that the questions are asked and the, the format that they have been asked. But since you must also bear in mind that since everything is written online for the past two, two years, I would not have some of the past exam papers that were written online, but it will also, the, the ones that I'm going to use will also give you a guidance in terms of how your, your exams looks like, okay? So we'll see how we, we do that. And then from October, based on when you start writing your exams, we will have to start scheduling individual module exam preparation sessions. So it means not all of you, you will meet in the same room. So we will have on an alternate days, uh, different modules looking at their exam preparation uh, content. OK, so. Let's start with today's session. I'm not going to ask you any comments and queries and questions because we wasted a lot of time when I was showing you where to find the notes. So today we're going to look at, like I said, regression and correlation. They are linked to one another. Uh, in some modules, you do measures of relationship in chapter three, uh, but we didn't cover it when we were looking at measures of relationship in, in semester one, right? We, we deferred that portion to today to say we're going to deal with the measures of relationship when we deal with regression because they are linked. And since they are linked, we tend to also cover them in the same session. So <clears throat> regression and correlation, we're going to explain in more detail what those are. But in order for you to be able to um, in, to be able to answer any of these questions, you require actually the calculator and the formula. You don't require any statistical table because they are not going to ask you to do any hypothesis testing. So you don't require any statistical table, just the calculator and the formulas. By the end of the session today, you should be able to make inferences about the correlation coefficient, which means you should be able to say what does that mean, interpret it. You should be able to interpret both the coefficient of correlation and the coefficient of determination. You should be able to know how to use your regression. Firstly, how to build the regression line and how to use that regression analysis or the regression line to predict the value of your dependent variable based on your independent variables. You should be able to interpret or know the meaning on, of some of the uh, regression coefficients such as the slope and the intercept. 
Okay, so <clears throat> when we talk about correlation, we're talking about a, finding out a relationship between two numerical variables. And we can do that by visualizing the two numerical variables on a Cartesian plane. And by visualization of the two numerical values, we will be creating a scatter plot. And from that scatter plot, it can tell us what is the relationship between numerical value one to numerical value two, where our first numerical value will be of the independent variable and your numerical value two will be from your dependent variable, which is the variable that at, um, at the later stage we will want to predict what that new value would be. So a scatter plot, we use it to show those the relationship of the two variables. Sorry. And from that uh, scatter plot, we are able to tell what is the relationship and we can calculate what we call a correlation coefficient. But in terms of that relationship, it will also tell us what is the strength of that relationship and what is the direction of that relationship. So what do I mean by the strength and the, uh, uh, the strength and the direction? So in terms of the strength, we talk about whether they, if there is a strong relationship or if there is a weak relationship, or if there is a moderate relationship. When we talk about the direction, we are talking about whether there is a negative relationship or there is a positive relationship, or otherwise there is no relationship. Because here we're talking about the relationship between two numerical values. Let's look at the types of relationship that can exist using the scatter plot. The line that you see that passes through all the dots on your scatter plot, we call that the regression line. Ignore that for now because we're not going to talk about it now. We're only going to talk about it at the later stage. But in terms of the relationship that you see, there can be different relationships. Like I already explained, there can be a relationship or there can be no relationship, but also on top of it, there can be multiple different types of relationship that can exist or different types of relationship that can exist. Like they can be a linear relationship. With a linear relationship, it means the dots on your scatter plot, they follow a straight line. Like you see with the straight line that you see here, all these dots, they resemble a straight line that is going up or the straight line that is going down. And these are the types of relationship. And this is when the value, we, we can interpret this by saying when the values of your X, which is your independent variable, and the value of your independent variable increases the value of your dependent variable increases. So when this increase, that increase. That is the linear relationship for a positive relationship. When it's a negative relationship, we say when the value of X are increasing, which it means the value of your independent variables increases, your value of your dependent variables are decreases are decreasing, and that is called a negative relationship. So the strength in terms of that will, will sorry, the direction will just be a negative relationship. We will talk about the strengths just now. There are also some type of a Cavalier relationships. And this you would have noticed when, when they were presenting data on the COVID-19 um, data, usually they would use some exponential graph to show how the number of um, infections or people people who are getting COVID are increasing exponentially. And they would use the second graph that is at the bottom, what we call an exponential relationship. It means it when the values of your independent and your uh, dependent variable, they increase 
they, their relationship are exponentially increasing. And sometimes it can be exponentially decreasing, but for this one, it shows the exponential increase. Uh, otherwise, if you ever played a, or you have ever bounced a ball, you will see that when you bounce a ball, it takes, it goes up, but it also have to come down. And that type of a visualization that you see that the ball is creating, it is what we call a cavalier relationship between the, whatever you have put, uh, the, for example, the pressure you've put and the time it took for the ball to go up and come down. So that relationship, we call it a quadratic relationship because it goes up and then it has to come down. Sometimes there can be no relationship between your dependent and independent variable. And those type of relationship, you can visualize them and see them in this type of views where all the dots are scattered everywhere, uh, where it does not even form any pattern, whether you can say when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y are decreasing or increasing, you cannot make sense of that because the data points are scattered everywhere and sometimes they might be on a constant move so for example here we can see with the value of x increasing the value of y is almost similar they stay constant the values of y they are almost constant sometimes it doesn't have to be like that it can be that when the values of why are increasing or decreasing the values you find that the the relationship with your x value stays constant so your value of your x stays constant and you have this vertical dots that are going just up 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 up, up. Yeah. right so those are the type of relationship now let's talk about the strength so we spoke about the direction. Now let's talk about the strength of those relationship. So to calculate the strength of the relationship, we normally use what we call a coefficient of correlation, which is R. And this measures the strength also. It can also give you the direction, but we already now know how to interpret the direction based on the negative and the positive, right? But with the coefficient of correlation, the most important thing is it will give you a number. And that number will always be between 0 and 1, and it will tell you what is the strength of that relationship, whether it's direction of negative or positive, but it will definitely tell you the strength of that relationship. And like I said, oh, I said it's between 0 and 1. So Sorry, my bad. The Coefficient of correlation R has the value between negative 1 and positive 1. So it takes any value between negative 1 and positive 1. So it can be 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, or it can even be in a percentage format where it can be 100% or negative 100%, negative 0 0.99, negative 0 0.98. Uh, sorry, negative 98%, negative 99%, negative 68%, or 0 0.68, or 0 0.5. You can refer to your coefficient of R in that manner. How do we then interpret the value that we get? If your R, which is your coefficient of correlation, if it's bigger than zero, we say the correlation is positive. So any value that will be bigger than zero, we would say the correlation is positive. When x increases, y increases as well. And we could see it from the scatter plot as well. If the value of r is less than zero, we say it is a negative relationship. When the value of x increases, the value of y decreases. And if the value of R is equals to zero, there is no relationship. So how do we then 
calculate or, or describe the strength in terms of the actual value that we have. So let's assume that we have an R value of minus one. How we interpret that, we would say your dependent and independent variable have a perfect negative correlation or neg perfect negative relationship. If it's between minus one and 0 0.79, we say it has a strong negative relationship. If it is between negative 0 0.79 and 0 0.39, we say it has a moderate uh, negative relationship. And if it has a score between 0 0.39 and 0, we say it has a a weak relationship, and if it has a score of zero, we say it has a um, no correlation. So this is your question. Anyone can answer this. If I get a six R of 16%, who can tell me the direction? and the strength of that relationship. How do you describe it? Anyone? When it is 16% or can say when it's 0, 0,16. Anyone? Is it the perfect? negative relationship or is it a perfect strong negative relationship or is it positive how do you define that how slizzy yes i think it is a weak positive correlation it will because be. yes because it is le it lies between um 0 0.39 and 0 Yes, definitely. Because I only gave you the negative, you should already look at this. If the answer here is positive, therefore it means it cannot be negative, it will be a positive. So similar, similar thing for when it is positive, when it's between 0 0.39 and 0, we say it has a weak positive correlation. So that is a weak positive correlation or a weak positive relationship between your independent and your dependent variable. Uh, what about when it is R of negative 0 0.84? Or we can say it is negative 84%. What type of a relationship will that be? Uh, uh, a strong negative correlation. It will be a strong negative correlation because it will be between negative 1 and 0 0.79. Okay, so even on the positive, you will have defined the same criteria. If it's between, if it lies between 0 0.39 and 0 0.79, it will be a moderate positive relationship, but if it is between 0 0.79 and 1, it will be a strong positive correlation. And when it is equals to 1, we'll say it has a perfect positive relationship. So you need to know how to define or interpret the number that you get from your coefficient of correlation. We will do lots of other exercises just now. So uh, I'm not going to touch through all this because we spoke about it. Um, we looked at them when we were looking at the scatter plot. But if, for example, um, a scatter plot that looks like uh, the second one, 
where everything is scattered all over. When you calculate your R, you might find that your R will reflect uh, as R of 0 0.18, which will tell you that this is a weak positive relationship uh, because it's not clearly when you're looking at the scatter plot itself, you can determine whether this is positive or negative. And But when you calculate your R, it can give you that indication of whether this is a positive relationship or a negative relationship, or even if there's some sort of a relationship that exists within that. And sometimes when the points look like this, we say the R, when you calculate it, will be equals to 0 0.85, and you can say that is a strong positive relationship. But when they look like the first one, where everything is on almost forming a straight line, perfect straight line. And when you calculate your R and you find that your R is one, you can say this is a perfect positive relationship and so on. So sometimes when you do the calculations, especially to calculate the coefficient of correlation, you might be asked to use the sum square measures. You need to know how to calculate your R by using the sum square measures. And later on, when we calculate the slope, you will also be able to use the sum square measures, but they will give you formulas and ask you to calculate them. So you need to know that the sum square measures of X values is given by the summation of your X minus the mean of X squared or we can say is the same as the sum of x squared minus the sum of x in bracket squared divided by n. It's easy to calculate all these sum square measures on your calculators uh, when you are given your values for your x and y as well. We will we'll look at more exercises to look at the sum square measures, but I was just highlighting this so that you are familiar with some of these formulas as well. With the sum square measures, and especially when we calculate the, the relationship, we sometimes also get what we call the variation because what happens with uh, when you do your, your correlation and your regression analysis, there will be some time where they are some errors that you get that are not accounted for in your regression line. And later on, we will discuss what a regression is all about. But in terms of the correlation and the regression, there is also what we call the measure of variation. And the measure of variation, we get it by calculating the total variation. And that total variation is given by your sum square measures of your regression, which is the regression um, point or the regression line, plus your sum square measures of your errors. So that those are the errors that uh, we cannot account for. So your SST is given by your SSR plus your SSE. And this is the formulas to calculate your SST. This is the formula to calculate your SSR. And to calculate your SSE, you use that formula. Where your Y hat is your estimated value for your regression. Here, I'm just pointing out to you the formulas. You do not have to memorize the formulas because most of the time in the exam, they will give you the formulas if they want you to use them in your calculation, but you need to know what each and every one of them, how do you calculate them and how do you get them? So for example, looking at SST is easy because it says is the sum of your observed minus your estimated value of your Y squared. So here you will take for every observed value, you will subtract the mean of your Y value and square the answer and add all the answers that will give you your SST, which is the total sum of squares. For your SSR, which is your regression, the, SS, the regression sum of squares is given by the sum of your 
estimated value. So this estimated value, you will calculate it using your regression line. I will show you how to estimate or how to find the estimate of Y. So you will have your estimated value of your Y. You will subtract for every estimated value of y, you will subtract the mean of y and square the answer, and that will give you SSR. SSE is your observed minus your estimated. Because you estimate your values by using your observed value. So for every observed value, there will be an estimated value, and you will subtract the difference and square the answer. And the sum of them will give you your sum square errors. And we will look at an example on how to answer some of this if they are given to you as a question. So your SST is a measure of variation of your Y values around the mean and your SSR is your variation attributable, attributable to the relationship between your X and your Y which is why it is the explained variation and your SSE, which is your error sum of a, uh, squares, is your variation of your Y attributes to factors other than your X, and hence these are, are called unexplained variation. So with that, the the SSRs and the SST, we can use them to calculate what we call a coefficient of determination. Otherwise, if you have your R, which is your coefficient of correlation, you can calculate what we call a coefficient of determination, which is R squared. So if we use a formula, R squared is given by SSR divided by SST. Or you can say this is the same as your R squared, your coefficient of R, which I can put it in bracket, is your R squared, and that will give you your SSR. So if you have already your coefficient of correlation, you can just find your coefficient of determination. Otherwise, if they've given you your SSR as an SSTs and they ask you to calculate R squared, you can calculate R squared. And your R squared is the square root. If you take the square root of your R squared, you will get your R. So it means if you have R squared, you can find your coefficient of correlation. Right. What is what is the coefficient of determination? A coefficient of determination is the portion or the proportion of the total variation in the dependent variable that is explained by the variation in your independent variable. And that's how you're going to interpret the answer that you get. So you're going to say, for example, if I assume that we had an R squared of 64% or 0.64%, you would say 64% of the total variation in the de dependent variables is explained by the variation in the independent variable or 0.64 of the total variation in Y is explained by the total variation in X. Let's look at more examples of this. I've already explained that. So let's say our R squared is R. So yeah, we know that our R squared is equals to one. We know whether the relationship is positive or negative, um, positive or negative, we know that there is a perfect relationship on this because your R will be also equals to one. The square root of one is one. 
So in terms of how we interpret this R squared, we will say 100% of the variation in Y is explained by the variation in X. If we have your R squared of, let's assume that this is the R squared of 0. It is a weaker relationship and therefore we can say it's of 0 0.17. If this is the relationship, so this looks like negative, so it will be a negative and this one will be R, oh, R squared can never be negative. It will always be positive because it's, it's a square. So this also we can say this is 0 0.18. Let's assume that both of them are different. Let's make this one 25, 27, because it looks much better than the one below. So let's assume that those are the relationship, the R squared that we have. So we can see clearly that this are weak relationship, but how we explain the R squared, we can say 0 0.27 of the variation in this is attributed to the variation in X. And we can also say the same, 0 0.18 of the variation in Y is attributed by the variation in X. Or we can also say some, but not all variation in Y can be explained by the variation in X. We can use those terminologies as well. If your R is zero, we say they, uh, there is no relationship. Therefore, the value of Y does not depend on the value of X. Hence, we can also say it in this way. None of the variation in Y is explained by the variation in X. So always remember how we interpret your R squared. Suppose that the correlation coefficient between the person's salary and his educational attainment is equals to R equals to 0 0.6395. How do we interpret this? We interpret this by saying your R squared, which is your coefficient of correlation, because this is your R, right? And we want to find the coefficient of determination. We take R, we square the answer. So we just square this. So it will be 0, 0.63 times 0, 0.6392 times 0, 0.6392. Or you can say it's 0, 0.6392 squared, which will give you 0, 0.4090. And how do we interpret that? We can say that approximately 41% of the variation in the person's salary can be explained by the variation in his educational attainment. So from getting a coefficient of correlation, we can just calculate the coefficient of determination to determine what is the percentage of the total variation in the person's salary that can be explained by the variation in his educational attainment. Before I move on, are there any questions or comments? Okay. Uh, so, so yes, Justice. You will say when we interpret this, we say this 41% is from the can you just uh, uh, elaborate on this 41 percent, please? So the 41 percent, you calculate it because you are giving your coefficient of correlation and you are asked to calculate the coefficient of determination and interpret it. You will take your coefficient of correlation and square, the, square that because R, R squared is R times R right? Because there are two of them. R squared is the same as R times R, which means there are two of the R's. 
So if I take R squared, which is 0 0.6395, and I square that until I get 41%, and when you calculate or when you interpret the R squared, you always state it in this manner and say the 0 0.4 one, if we round it off to two decimals, 0.41 or 41% of the variation in the person's salary can be explained by the variation in their educational attainment. Maybe I, I have some done something wrong here, I don't know, because mm -hmm. when I square this 0, 0.6395, I got 0, 0.79. When I put it in the square root. Point six three nine five squared equals. So you don't take the square root, you put the square because it is zero point six nine three six three nine five times 0 0.6395, not the, not the square root, but the square, the power. So okay. the power, yes. Okay, like, like that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, if there are no other questions, then we move on to the regression analysis. So in terms of the regression analysis, Regression analysis is used to predict the value of a dependent variable based on the value at least of one independent variable. So in your module, we only work with one independent variable. So we don't do multiple regression analysis. We only use one independent variable. And your regression analysis is used to explain the impact of changes in the independent variable on the dependent variable. And this impact of change, we use the slope to calculate that impact, that those changes as well. So your dependent variable will be your outcome variable, which will be the variable that you wish to explain or predict. And your independent variable are your input variable, which are the variable you're going to use to predict or explain your dependent variable. So our independent variable will be the one that we use a guppy on top or y hat on top. That will be your dependent variable because it's the value that we want to estimate. So this is your regression line. Those who did math in, in high school or did physics, you remember, y is equals to mx plus c which was the equation of a straight line that you've learned the same concept or y is equals to a a x plus b sorry a x plus b some some of you would have uh, learned it that way of y is equals to a plus B X, something like that. So some of you would have learned it like that in your high school, especially those who did their uh, uh, caps recently. You used Y is equals to A X, A plus B X. Those who learned in my era, you, you learned the equation of a straight line as Y is equals to M X plus C. And those who did physics, you also probably would have learned it that way. Okay, so they mean one and the same thing. So in terms of statistics, we use y hat is equals to b0 plus b1x, where your y hat is your estimate, your y estimate, your b0 is your intercept, which we'll call it the estimate of your regression and your b1 is your slope which we call it your estimate of the regression slope and your x is your observation value and that is your equation of 
the regression or what we call the regression line or the least square regression line or the regression equation. On the regression equation, these are the two values that we need to calculate and substitute. The other stays as they are, as variables, y hat and x stays. The only value that changes will be that. So in a way, our regression line, we will end up having y hat is equal to two plus three x. Let's assume that this is our regression line. We will have to write it in that manner or in this fashion. <clears throat> Always remember that the slope is the value that multiplies next to the x, right? And your intercept is the value that is standing alone. So with that note, what is a regression line? A regression or a simple regression line provides an estimate of your population regression line, which is the equation that we just give it. We should be able to use the regression line to find the relationship between or estimate the relationship between your X value and your Y value. And we should be able to also interpret the intercepts and the slope. What do they mean in terms of the values that we are seeing? Where your slope will always tell us what will be the changes in your Y value assumed by how they relate to the changes in your X value. And your B0, which is your estimate, will be where your x value is zero, it will always be the same as your estimated value. So your b0 is the estimated average value of y when your x value is equals to zero. So if this value is zero, then your estimate will be the same as your y intercept. Your B1, which I've already explained, it's the estimated exchange in the in the average value of Y as a result of one increase or one unit increase in the value of your X. And that's how you will interpret the two numbers. So those two numbers, B0 and B1, we're going to interpret them in this manner. So let's look at an example, right? A FEM personnel department hired employees for a given job primarily on the basis of the results of an aptitude administered to the job applicant and the performance of those hired was rated on the same scale by their supervisors a year after they have been hired. A sample of the test grades and the supervisor's assigned grades is as follows. So here is an HR um, issue where they want to see whether their employees that they have hired are doing the job well based on how the score that they got when they, they got in as job applicants and the score that they got when they do their performance um, management with their supervisor. So we need to compare to see if we want to see if there is any relationship between how the job applicants got in their job aptitude test based on the performance in their job right now as their supervisor scored them. Uh, is there a relationship? Then we need to put the test grades and the supervisor grade on a Cartesian plane and do a scatter plot to visualize them. So here is the test scores and here is their supervisor grade. So, so one uh, employee scored a test grade of one and the supervisor gave them a one and we can go and plot that one and a four and that is the employee that we were talking about. The other one scored three and they got a supervisor grade of six. So three and six, that is the one. Five and 10, five and 10, 
the next one, 5 and 12, the same, 5 and 12. The last one, 1 and 13, 1 and 13. And there is our scatter plot. And I also draw a line just to see how close they are from this line. We'll talk about this line in a short while because this line, remember the equation of a straight line, is the same as your regression line, which means this is the regression line that we have drawn. So if we can see this, we can interpret this. How do you interpret this based on what we have learned in terms of the relationship? When the value of X increases, the value of Y increases. So we can interpret it in that way. And therefore, this means there is a positive. Relationship, right? Because here we only talking about whether there is a, a, a direction, a positive relationship. And we can see that there is a positive relationship with this one being an outlier can also refer to it as an outlier and you all know what an outlier is okay so if we need to go ahead and calculate this regression line so that we can write this regression line in terms of y hat is equals to b0 plus b1x we need to calculate the regression line so to calculate the regression line we can either use excel on Excel, we can go ahead and take the tax grade and the and the supervisor score and create a regression output from the data analysis panel or data analytics uh, menu bar. And I will show you how to you can do that. And that will produce a summary output. On the summary output, there are a couple of things that you can take note of. The first one is the multiple R and your R squared or your adjusted R squared and R, you can ignore them. Only those two, multiple R, which will tell you this is a coefficient of correlation R and this is your R squared, all right? So you are able to see the values. So it's 0 0.32 and 0 0.10 for R squared and for R. The other thing that is very important for you is those two. So we know that we have our intercept and our test grade will be our slope. So intercept will always be stated as intercept. Your slope will not be stated as slope. It will be stated as uh, uh, the actual value, but you just need to remember that that will be your slope. The only other thing that you need to worry about when you look at your output is the coefficients, which means they would have given you your coefficients, which are 7.125 and 0 0.625. So those are the coefficients. So we already spoke about correlation, coefficient of determination, and taking the coefficient, we can then go and and describe our, remember our equation says y hat is equals to b0 plus b1 x. So our x is the test grade. Our b1 will be the coefficient, which is 0 0.25. Our supervisor grade is our y hat and our intercept is 7.12. And that is your regression line. I will show you just now on how we can do this on Excel. Okay, so let's assume that now we are not given the Excel output, but we are asked this other question, determine the least square regression line, which is that equation they gave us, find the coefficient of correlation and determine the equation of determination. Remember? Now we're going to use the manual calculation. Remember our two columns, X and Y, our test grades, test grade and supervisor grade. You need to make sure that you capture them the way they reflect 
on your question as well. You also need to add some totals because we need to calculate the sum of. Remember those sum square measures that we used? They used the summations. Summations are totals. So if I add this 50, this will be the same as the sum of x is equals to 15. This will be the sum of y is equals to 45. If I take x times y, which will be the sum, your x times y will be 1 times 4 will give me 4. 3 times 6 is 18. When I add all the answers, it will give me the sum of x and y, which is equals to 145. If I take your x and I square every answer, it will be 1 squared is 1 times 1 is 1. 3 squared is 3 times 3 is 9. 5 squared is 5 times 5 times 5 is 25. If I add all of them, this will be the sum of x squared, which will be 61. And I do the same with y. I take the y squared. Y, uh, 4 squared is 16. 6 squared is 36 and so on. And this will give me your sum y squared. As you can see, then I can go and use my sum square measures to answer any of the questions that we have. I can also calculate the mean. Remember the mean, which will be your x bar, will be equals to 3 for the y. The mean of y will be equals to 9. So why did I do this on the table? So you just need to make sure that to answer the questions, either for the correlation of coefficient or for the coefficient of determination or the regression line, you need to create a table that looks almost exactly the same as this. Why? Because there are equations that you need to calculate. So we already determined what all those are. So we know that the regression line is y hat is equal to b0 plus b1. We need to first calculate our slope and the slope equation we calculate it using that equation. As you can see, it uses the sum of your x, y. It, you need the sum of x. You need the sum of y. Or sum of y which is the sum of x, the sum of y, which are those values. You need the n. n is how many there are. So we know that n here was equals to 5 because they were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There were 5. So n is 5. We need the sum of x squared. Sum of x squared. We did calculate it here. We also need the sum of x, which is that. So the sum of x squared and the sum of x squared are different. 61 and 15 are different. This is sum of x, which is 15 squared, and n is 5. We will need to calculate the slope. From calculating the slope, we need to calculate the intercept, and our intercept is the b0. To calculate the intercept, you need the mean of y. We calculated x bar and y bar. The mean of y minus the slope times the mean of x. We know that how do we calculate all that. So now let's do the calculations. So the first one, we substitute the values into the equation. The sum of x, y, looking at sum of x, y is 145. Sum of x is 15. Sum of y is 45. n is 5 divide by the sum of sum squared is 61 minus the sum of x squared is 15 squared divide by 5 and the answer you will get would be the same as the one that we got previously which is 0 0.625. Then we can calculate the sum of mean of y which is 45 divided by n, 45 divided by 5 gives us 9 the sum of x, 15 divided by 5, gives us 3. And we can substitute all these values that we have into the equation to calculate your intercept. B0 is the same as your mean of y is 9 minus B1 is 0 0.625 times 
the mean of x of 3 is 7.125. That is the same as what we got from the Excel output. Now we need to substitute V0 and V1 into the equation. So it means we're going to take only those two values and substitute back into the equation. And our equation of straight line based on the test and the supervisor grade is 7.125 plus 0.625x. Let's say and assume now that we need to calculate or estimate if the test was two, if the test, someone got a test grade of two. If we want to estimate that, so our y hat will be equals to 7.125 plus 0.625. And where we see x, we're going to put the two, and then we're going to calculate that. And that will be equals to point, uh, 7.125 plus two bracket plus 0.625 times 2, close bracket, equals. And the answer is 8.38. 8.38. And I can see that this is in decimal, in, in, in whole number. So if I round it off, it will just be 8. So that will be equals to 8. The same will happen if they ask what happens if they have a score of, of six. You will just go and, and calculate that. You will just go and substitute and say where the score is six. The answer is 11. When the score is six, the answer is 11. So I've already created two more points. So these are my estimates, my y hats. Oh, sorry, my y hats. These are my y hats that I am estimating. And you should be able to do that by using the equation of a straight line to estimate a new value of y. You can also estimate the value of y by using the same. So remember, the on the SSIs, where it's your estimate minus your observed so you will have to create a y hat estimate here so for example if i need to estimate what one would be so for one you go back and you say one and that will be equals to eight so your new for y it say for one it says it's eight that is your estimate it's not the actual value. And if I estimate three, you do the same. Three is nine. So your estimate for three will be nine. You go and estimate for 10, uh, for five. Five. Ten and 10. And the estimate for one, we did calculate it was eight. So this, are, this becomes your new estimate. And when you go back, if we go back one more slide, five more slides back, or more than that. Remember, all this, you are able to calculate them because that is how you will have calculated your y hat. You know what your mean is. You've calculated your mean of y, and you can just substitute and calculate your SSR. If you are calculating SSE, you know what your y hat are. You know what your observed values are. So we know that our observed for one was one. The estimate was eight. Oh, sorry. The y hat, the y value for one was four. The estimate was eight. And the answer, you take a square and you go to the next one. The y hat estimate there was something else. And we found another one. So for 10 was 10 minus 10 for 5 was 10 and 10. 
and you square and you add all of them. So you will just use this to answer those questions that you have there. So that is one way or two ways. So I've already showed you two ways. So I've showed you the Excel, right? I've shown you whether to use the manual calculations. So these are your manual calculations. But now let's continue. So let's say we need to calculate your R because question B said calculate R and coefficient of correlation. So your R, this is the formula to calculate your R. If you don't have your Excel output uh, summary, therefore it means you are expected to do some calculation. This is the formula to calculate R. Same, you just need to substitute these values that we got here onto this formula as well. We know what the sum square measures were. This was 145, this was 15, this was 45, um, N was five and so on and so forth. We just substitute into this formula and we calculate and we find your R. And you can see that the R will be the same as the previous one that we got, which was 0, 0,32. And from your R, you can calculate your coefficient of correlation. Sorry, we didn't calculate it here. So your R squared, you just take your 0, 0,3227 and then you square it. Use the long one. Don't use the already uh, summarized. Oh. So you say 0.322. And three 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 two 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 seven squared, and that gives you zero point one zero. Oh, we can call it ten percent, and now we can interpret this. Your coefficient of correlation. We say there is a moderate, positive, correlation or relationship and for uh, uh, your coefficient of determination, we say 10% of the variation in the test grades can be explained by variation. Which one was our X? Sorry, my bad. Our X is, our Y is, our supervisor grade, sorry, my bad. You need to write it correctly. So it's first the supervisor grade. Supervisor grades can be explained in the test. Great. Oh, bye. That's great. So that is how you interpret the two. Interpreting the correlation, the regression line, we can interpret our B0, which is our intercept. Um, because our normally the intercept, we normally actually even don't interpret it because uh, uh, 7.125 it's your your it's your intercept so it would you will just say 7.125 uh, 7 uh, average of the value of your supervisor grade is um will 
be the same or the or you can say the estimated value of your supervisor grade will be 7.125 if your test grades are equals to zero because if if we put zero there this will be zero therefore it means the estimate will just be 7.125 that's how you will interpret that but in terms of the slope how we interpret the slope which is our b1 we say uh, because it's 0 0.625 it will tell us that the mean of your supervisor score or your supervisor grade will increase by 0 0.625 on average for every additional one unit increase because it's positive so for this is the same as increase when it is negative we say decrease so 0 0.625 because it's positive we say the supervisor grade will increase with every one additional increase it will we will say if it's negative we would have said it will decrease by 0 0.625 for every one additional increase in your, your test grades. So you just need to pay attention to that. So this is the key word as well. Increase or decrease. It's based on the sign in front of the slope. And the sign in front of the slope should also correspond to the sign in front on your correlation coefficient. Okay, in summary, since we are left with 30 minutes and I haven't even gone to the Excel output and the calculator. In summary, what you have learned is the following. How to use your regression analysis to predict the value of your dependent variable uh, based on the value of your independent variable. We have learned the meaning of the regression coefficient b0 and b1 which is the intercept and the slope we've learned how to make inferences about the inf the, the the slope and the coefficient of correlation we've learned how to interpret the coefficient of correlation and the determination coefficient of determination now i want to go into how do we use a calculator So we might not be able to do a lot of exercises, but this might, might also give you some idea in terms of how you use your, your calculator. Instead of using those formulas that I've shown you, you can use your calculator to solve the same questions. So let's assume that this is the new data that we are given. Consider this following data and we need to calculate the regression, um, the coefficient of correlation, and so on. I will suggest that if you have a Casio calculator, you open it and we start. When I say press this, you do that. You follow as I do so that then you don't get lost. I will also open my one and I will do the same with my one. So I will expect you to mimic what I do as well and follow what the slide is saying. Okay, so we have our data, our X and Y. We need to first press our calculator and put it in a state mode. So you go and press your mode button. Right, you will go and press the mode button and this menu will come up on your calculator. Then from the mode, you will need to press state two or uh, you will need to press two for state mode so depending on your calculator because some case your calculators are different on this one that i have as well it looks exactly the same as what i'm displaying on the powerpoint so i'm going to press two so you need to make sure that you also see what you see on your side and press state the one that looks like state then this a menu will come up 
And the next menu that comes up will look exactly the same as what you see in front of me. You on, on the slide and on my calculator. On my one, it's on number two that I'm interested in. That's why we will do the regression calculations. The first one, we will use it for answering anything dealing with measures of uh, measures of um, variation and measures of um, central tendencies, the ones that we did in term one. So for now, we're going to use two for A plus BX. As you can see that it looks almost like our regression line. A plus BX. So I'm going to press two again. So it means after that and the table will appear. Therefore, it means our, our data is ready or we're ready to capture our data. To capture your data, based on this, you have your X and your Y. You need to capture first the X values, then we go and capture the Y values. To capture the X value, we say 4 equal, 2 equal, 6 equal, 4 equal, 3 equal. Once you are done and you are at the end, you will use your arrow to scroll up to capture your Y values. You go up, 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 up with those arrows, up, 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 until you get to where it's four on the X side, and then you move to the right to get to the Y block. So you will be on, your cursor will be flicking on the Y uh, block, and then you start capturing five equal, three equal, seven equal. So let's do that based on my one calculator. So I'll start four equal, two equal, six equal, four equal, and three equal. And you can see that there are five of them. So one, two, three, four, five. So I need to make sure that my observations, there are five. And my block is on six, so I'm just going to go up, 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 up until I get to one, where four. Then I use my right arrow to go to my right, and I'm on the same. You need to make sure that you capture the values exactly as you see them. Four needs to correspond with five, two to three, six with seven, and four with six. So I'm going to say five equal, three equal. 7 equal and 6 equal, 5 equal, and that is the last one. And I can just go back and double check if my values correspond. And I can see 4 and 5, 2 and 3, 6 and 7, 4 and 6, and 3 and 5. They are exactly the same. Then you're going to press an AC button. Your data is stored on your Casio calculator. You can just press the AC button. Now, in order for us to get to the next step, we need to press shift and then press one so that we can get a menu that looks like that. So we need to press shift and then press one and you will get a menu like that. Any question? Okay thought someone was asking a question. So now you, you should have a menu that looks like this. You can ignore number one where it says type. Number two will say data. That will be the table that we captured. You will be able to see the same table or the same data. Number three will give you the sum square measures like those ones that you saw the summation of some numbers. So if you press three, you will see all those summations. So if you are given a formula for the coefficient of correlation, you can use the summations to calculate or to substitute into your formula. So here are the summations. So to get them, you just press any of the, the value that you want to use and you use that. So once you're done, let's say we want the summation of X and Y. So you'll just press five and that will be the summation of X and Y. And then you will press equal and it will tell you that it's equals to zero. 
it, it, sorry, it's equals to 107. Once you're done, you have the answer. You can press the AC button and go back. Shift, start, and it will take you back to that. And you want to continue and get the next summation value. You just press three again, and then it, you go to the summation. Let's say you want two, and then you press two, and then equal, and it will give you your summation. And once you're done, you go back. And so but on and so forth. Thing. But we're not interested in the summation for now. Yes. Uh, you say you press shift and you press what? One. Shift one and it goes back to that uh, type summation register then. And then you will press any value that you want to go into. So for now, I was just demonstrating the sum but I want to move to the one that uh, talks to the regression. So let's go to regression, which is five. So we're going to press five for regression. And you will see here, you will have one, which corresponds to A, B corresponds to, to B, uh, two corresponds to B, and three to R, and four to X with a copy. And y to the estimate y with y with the copy so now let me explain each and every one of them so where you see a it is your slope so what i will suggest you do is the following is for you to write the equation y is equals to b0 plus b1x so that you know that where you see A, it corresponds with B0. Where you see B1, it will be B, right? Because from this equation that you see here, it looks exactly the same as that. Remember, your intercept and your slope. This is very important, especially when you go uh, to answer the question. So you need to know that this is your intercept and this is your slope. B, the one, A for one will give you the answer for this intercept. When you press two for B, it will give you the answer for the slope. That is one thing that you need to remember. R is your coefficient of correlation, right? If you need to calculate the coefficient of determination, you will have to press the X squared button. So three will give you coefficient of correlation. X squared after you press three will give you your coefficient of determination. If you need to estimate the value of Y, I will show you how to do that. First, let's find the slope of this values. I press the wrong number. Shift one five. So let's find the slope, which is one a equals. Our slope is one comma six five nine. So I hope everyone has that. So y is equals to one comma six nine. I'm just going to keep two values. Six five. Nine, so which is six six, right? And now let's go and find B. So B, before I write the sign, I need to find the value of B. B to find B, you do the same. It's on five. B is two, and you press equal. It's positive. If it was negative, it would be negative. So it's 0 0.93. So that will be plus 0 0.93. 93, and I'm not done. I must put an X there. That is that. So let's say, for example, I need to find what is the coefficient of correlation. R, shift, set, 5. 
R is 3. Equal. 0 0.93 is our R. So our R. Our R is 0 0.93. Let's go find R squared. Our R squared will just be, we just press the square button. The answer will square equals 0 0.87. 0 0.87. So we know that it is a positive, a strong positive relationship. And we know that 87% of the variation in our Y is attributed by the variation in, in X, right? So that is that. So what if I want to find a new estimate, let's say five, where X is five? So if I need to go find the new estimate, so let's go find the new estimate. We know that our new estimate is five. So to find the estimate, you first press what X value is, and then you go press shift, shift, and then one, and rec five, and then we go to five, Again, for the estimate, the Y estimate, five. And you will see your answer will look like this. And when you press equal, the new estimate is six. So where X is five, Y is six. What if they give us the Y value, the estimate for Y value? Let's say they say our estimate here is is the estimate here is four. So they gave us the Y estimate. They asking us to find the X estimate. Same procedure. You start first with the, the value that you want to estimate, which is four. And then you press shift, you press that, you press reg for five, because now we are estimating the new value of X. We're going to use four. We're going to use the X estimate, which is on button number four. It's just that I used four and the four is the number, but if it was 10, you will start first by 10. And the new estimate is three. So where Y is four, X will be three. So let's say our Y is 10. We need to estimate the x value similar thing you just press 10 first and then you go shift start five and four and equal and it is equals to nine and that's how you will do the estimate so always on your case here, you will go back to shift and state because this tells you that you need to go and visit your state functions. Shift and state to call your state functions. All the time you're going to always continue with shift and one and then select whichever one you want to to select. So if you want to find the mean The mean of Y and the mean of X, it, you will find it on VAR. There are your means and there are your, your S, which are your standard deviation for X and standard deviation for Y and so forth. You will find all of them from here and the mean and the mean of X and mean of Y. So you will find them there. So that's how you will use your calculator. So those who have a sharp calculator, also a financial calculator, these are the steps. 
you also just need to make sure that you put your calculator to state mode. I'm just going to open my, my sub um, calculator. So you to follow the same steps. You will also do the same because your calculator, the values are visible in green in front of you. The means, mean of y, mean of x, the standard deviation of x, standard deviation of y, your sum square x and y, your sum square y, your, sorry, the sum of x and y, the sum of y, the sum of y squared, the sum of x squared, the sum of x. They are visible here. The only thing that is not visible, don't look at the A, B, C, Ds that are there. Look at the A and the B that are here. So the same thing, your, for you, A plus B, it will be the same. So your Y is equals to A plus B, X is the same as B, 0 and B, 1, X. So on your one, it will be written in small letters like that. So let's look at how you follow this. So you'll say, uh, go into mode and you will press one for state. Instead of pressing zero, because zero is when we do the study unit three, uh, we're going to use line. So you will press one for line and your calculator will be in state mode. Now, if you have a financial calculator or you have a uh, this calculator, which is a normal case, you, uh, sharp calculator, there is a small difference. On your financial calculator here, you have the data change and you have other things. So you need to make sure that you press the 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 values that are next to one another. This the the enter and the data change. So <clears throat> what you will do is your calculator is ready. It's in step mode one, which it means it's ready to do the regression calculations. So to capture your data, because there are two of them, we always capture your X and your Y. It's not the same with the case where they press the equal sign and capture one row first. You need to capture your X and Y. So I will be using the STO and the M plus. On your financial calculator, you will be using the two buttons that are next to one another. I forgot which one is which, but there is an enter and this, the, um, uh, the enter and the data change. So you will be using those two. So you will first start by pressing the X value, which is four, and then you press the STO which will be the data change on your one, and then you will press your five, and then you will press the enter. When you press enter, it will say data set one or n is one, whichever way it shows. So I should have data set five when I get to three and five. So let's continue to store three m plus on my one. Six store seven and plus, and then I go four store six and plus. And three store five and plus, and then I've got all of them. So it says data set five. So I know that there were five records. So I've stored all of them and then I can press on and off button. And from there, I can select whichever calculation I need to be calculating. Because I'm calculating the values that are in green, I will first need to press the alpha button. So let's say I say alpha A, and then I press equal. You can see that you get the same answer, which is 1,65, 6, 1,66 plus. And you do the same. If I need to get to the B, you just press on and off and say alpha and B equal and 0 0.93, 0 0.93 X. And now the, the difference with your calculator uh, is 
your R is there. So also you can do the same alpha R equal and there is your 0 0,93 and x squared. You just press the x squared. It will square that. It will give you your R squared. So let's say we want to estimate the same thing that we did with the previous one. Let's say we want to estimate the value of y and they told us it is 5 on this side. Or we want to estimate the value of y for x. So you do the same. You're going to press 5. Now, on your calculator, these are the two. On your calculator, it has them as y hat. Uh, y guppy and x guppy. Those are the ones that we're going to use to do the estimate. So we press five and then you press shift because they are written in orange. They are on the open and close brackets for both. So you just press second function and then you press the open bracket and there it is six. You will notice that it will be the same as the one that we got from the previous one. The same thing, if I need to do nine and 10, it will give you the same. So let's assume that we have 10 and we need to estimate the value of X. You will do the same on and off 10, second function X and the it's nine. And those who are using the financial calculator, I do also have the steps, but you can see that the steps are almost exactly the same. So you have your enter and you will have your, your X and Y data change or the comma on that one. So the two buttons that are next to one another, those are the things that you use, the X and Y and the enter button. Uh, the steps are here. You can, and also your calculator looks almost exactly the same as the normal um, sub calculator, especially when I was referring to the R and the A and the B and the summations. They are there in front, exactly the same. So you should feel at ease if you use those types. So we only have 15 minutes, and in this 15 minutes, I wanted to do an activity, but instead of doing an activity of using a calculator and doing that, I'm going to do this activity on Excel because that's what I said. So you will have this Excel sheet, which is a template. You will notice that there are a couple of things on this Excel sheet. Already, there are things that are pre-calculated, automated. The blue area, you do not change. You do not do anything to that. It will calculate automatically all the values that you need. The value of your B1, the value of your BX, of sorry, of your mean, your means, X and Y, the value of your B0, and it will also calculate your Y estimate. It will calculate so your regression line and you can see next to it there are some formulas right there the other thing uh, as well that you don't have to do anything it will calculate is your coefficient of correlation and coefficient of determination automated to calculate and it also gives you what equation we are using and I also show you the functions that I used to do those calculations. You can also see them there if you want to replicate them and do them your own or create them on your own. The other thing that I've also included here is calculation of your sum square measures, your SSEs and your SSTs in case they give you questions that relates to them. These are calculations, the answers for each one of them. So to the blue one, the answer is 263. The green one, the answer is that. However, now the challenge with using this template is knowing how to use it so that it does not affect your calculation. 
I've added the note here. You need to read this note. It says, if you have more values or more data, to add a row by clicking, you need to click in the cell B, row eight, and drag that row and highlight the row until you get to until Y equals to two or oh, Y squared, right? So you will just have to, let me demonstrate what I mean by that. If, for example, I need to add or delete, for example, this one, I must delete all this. So I need to go and highlight it like that. You can see that, right? I'm not going on to the row and do this. You will delete the rest of the other calculations that we have. You need to go and select from where you need to stop. So here we have, maybe I should make this gray. This, or maybe this, I must change this to gray, this area. So the white area is the only area that you need to do any changes. So we have this part that you need to change. So let's go to our question. I can minimize this and go to our question. Our question has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven values. So I'm gonna go to our table and check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values. So I don't need the rest of this. So from 12 till 10, I must just highlight until I get to Y squared to that column, column K. And when I get to that column, I must just right click, and that is the instructions as they are. Right click, insert or delete. Maybe I should have said it, insert or delete the columns that you don't need. You can repeat the step until you have enough rows to complete your X and Y. So if you have more values that you want to include, you can just right click, you do the same, right click and add more values. So now I do not need the this other value. So I'm going to delete and it's going to say, do you want to delete the entire row or shift to the left? I just want it to shift up. If I was inserting, it will go down. So I just want to delete that part only. And that is done. And, or maybe, oh, I forgot, sorry, my bad, Andrew. I said column B, so you need to start from column B because there are some totals there that we need to calculate as well. So you start from column B and you delete and it goes up and that will stay and there is my total so i'm just going to delete all this because i don't need that and you will see that my table now has meaningless information on there and then i'm going to capture the information as i see it one i'm going to start with all these values from x From Y, two, four, H, two, four, five, six, seven, nine, nine. And they automatically, it calculates all the other measures that I. I have, and there is my sum square measures. So my summation of x, y, my summation of x squared, my summation of y squared, my n. And if I scroll to this side, I will get my intercept and my slope, my slope, my mean, and mean of y, mean of x, and the intercept and the equation of a straight line. So I can also double check. 28 divided by seven is equals to four, and 42 divided by seven is equals to six. So 
it means I've done some diligence there, the calculations are correct. So I can go to the question. So let's look at our question and use the data that we have. So the first question is asked, they say, uh, oh, we can also double check because they did give us the sum square measures here, right? So we can double check those measures. So we know that this is the sum of X and Y. This was the sum of X. If I go up, you should be able to see all of them. Sum squared, X squared is 140. There is 140. Y squared is 292, there is 292. So already I can see that we've done the right things on some of this. It's difficult when you are doing a presentation and you open this thing. Okay, as well. So let's scroll to this side. Okay, so here are the calculations. The mean of X, we said it's four. It's correct. The mean of Y is six. It's correct. B1, it's 1,178. It's correct uh, because this is two, three decimals. We can increase the decimals. And you can see they, it's the same, 1,86. Sorry. And the regression line, it says the regression line should look like this. We're looking for the incorrect one. So here is the answer to our regression line. It says the regression line should be this. So looking at this and looking at this, we can see that it is the incorrect one. Um, the slope, we know that the slope is positive because the answer we got there was positive. So the slope is positive. That is the correct. Uh, it says when we estimate the value of 8, where 8 is or x is 8, what is the value of y? It says the value of y will be equals to uh, uh, 10.978. We can check that because we can say that value plus that value times eight, which is our estimated value, they say it should give us 10.71. Oh, very disappointed. My calculation doesn't want to work on there. So, but it's fine. We can use our calculators because we do have calculators. Just want to double check something here as well. The calculations that we have here, which is the same. So that multiply by a line. The same. It's correct. Maybe my fault here was using. Something not right somewhere. Oh, it's because I used eight six instead of eight. And that is the answer. That is correct. So if we use our calculator, we can also get the same answer because it's 
Let me close the case you want. The sharp one, let me use the case you. It's easy with the case you. So we have our equation of a straight line as our slope as 1.2. 86 plus, sorry, our intercept plus the slope of 1.1786 times 8 close bracket equals, and that is the same. It's just that because I've rounded off the 2,8 as well. So that is why the answer, my answer is increased. So we can increase the decimal here and we should be getting the same, the same answer more or less. Lizzie, I've said the There we go. So because I, I had rounded off quickly, yes? In a question like this, so if this was one of the questions in the exam, they will obviously give us the intercept and the slope in order to answer a question like that, right? Nope, nope. They won't give you, like you see here, I you have to calculate them in order for you to get them, right? Okay. In okay. order to, for, we are answering this question. The only information they gave you was this was the table and the sum square measures. You need to be able to know how to calculate the mean of X, the mean of Y, B1. You can either use the formulas like, like this formulas that I shared previously. you should be able to calculate this formulas, all this, all these formulas based on that information. And if they ask you about the R, you should be able to use the R, the R formula, or you can use the Excel sheet that I've just shared with you and I've just demonstrated it. Or you can use your calculator. We've done, we've used the calculator, right? Okay. To calculate all the values. In order for you to answer this, you can use your calculator or the Excel or the formula. Now, the last one that I want, also wanted to show you uh, in terms of that is, I'm going to take the same questions, the same data that we have which is that X and Y and Z. Some, some of you, you might not have the, if you go to data, there is a data analysis panel. If you don't have that, you go to file, you can come back to this recording and watch it again. You go to file account and, sorry, not account options. And you go to add ints and it will come to this uh, menu. There is the thing called analysis tool pack. You click on the analysis tool pack and you say go at the end, and this menu will pop up. You're going to tick the analysis tool pack and click OK. And then once you've done that, once you've done that, you close your Excel and reopen it. And the next time you re reopen it, the data analysis panel will be there. Once you have that, then you capture your data. This, let's assume that I've captured this data. I'm gonna open a new sheet. You capture the data, you type your data in, there is your X and there is your Y, and then you answer the question by going to you data analysis you don't have to highlight it you will see why you don't have to highlight it you go to data analysis and this menu will pop up you scroll until you get to the regression you click on the regression and you click okay and here it will say 
which values are your Y values. You need to be very careful with this in terms of the data that you are given. So our Y value, you're going to select only the Y values. You go to the X value, you click inside the box where it flicks and then you select your X values. You also need to state whether the, you included the labels. You see that I've included the label every time because I want the label to be part of the report as well. So you will tick labels. You ignore the rest of the other things that are here. Everything that is on here, you ignore. You can leave it on new ply or you can say, I want it on the same sheet as I am. You click on the output range and you click inside the box where it's it got the arrow there, and then you just go one, two, three, or you can, you can just select where you want to put it, the output. You just click on one of the cell, and then you press OK. It will generate this output, and you can just make it bigger a little bit so that everything is clearer. You are able to read every word of it. And there is the things on there. So the only thing you need is that. that. Because remember, that is your coefficient of correlation. That is your coefficient of determination. Now, let's go back and answer the question. So already you can see from here, if I go this way, there is my, my B1 is this value. You must always remember that intercept is B0. S uh, slope, it's your actual value that you will see. There is your X1. The only thing that you don't have with the output is your mean, is this other thing, right? So you only are able to answer one and two, but you cannot answer those other ones. So to answer the rest of the other ones, you go on the same data that you have, you go back to data and you go data analysis and you go descriptive statistic and you click OK, and you go going to select the data, both of it, and you say it is grouped by, because it looks like this, it's by column, so you say it's grouped by column, and the labels are in the first row. And you also go going to say you need the summary statistic because you want to know what is the mean and what is the standard deviation and the output, you can also put it right here. Maybe you can go just a little bit away from this one. Now also, it doesn't give you all the answers that you need because this one will just give you your mean. Those are the only thing that you will have. Your mean for X and Y, because that is what you would have calculated, right? So you are only able to answer those two. That's it. The slope, you only going to look for the slope, the whether it's positive or negative based on the answer that you got from the slope, which is the answer here. Positive means the, the value is positive. Negative, the value would have been negative. This is a neg, uh, it's not a slope. This is an intercept, so you cannot use this. You will use the value that is sitting in front of the value that is multiplying with an X. The estimate, you will calculate it based on the regression line. So let's see here. There is no other thing other than only calculating the mean that we will get from here. It will not give you the other things, as you can see. To calculate the other measures that you might need, like your x sum of x squared and all that, you will have to calculate them manually by, by multiplying this by that, get the answer there. So let's say you want to create an x and y. 
which is x multiplied by 1, you will just say that value multiply by that value and you will get the answer and you just go to the end. You will also need to do the totals. So remember, it's very important to always have totals. And that will give you the total by just going to auto sum and adding all the totals. And that is 201, which is the same as what you have here, 201. And you can do the rest. At the others, you won't be able to calculate if you don't know the formulas. So that is one of the exercises. The other exercise looks like this. Also, they have given you some of the sum of square measures. You can use um, this, the formulas. You can see here they're asking you to calculate the query, coefficient of correlation and the coefficient of determination. So based on the this one, you we have only seven rows here. So on this question, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight observations. So it means on our Excel sheet, I'm just going to minimize it, put it on the side. And make this smaller. We just need to add one row. So you just go to that and highlight and say insert. And we need it to shift down. And you just enter the values. First, what I like to do is to delete that. Now, the other thing, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention. The other thing is you will need to adjust the calculations as well, because when you add the row, there are no calculations added on those rows, the empty rows that you have there. So you go to the top one that you have here and you just drag. It will do the same calculations as the previous one. And then you just add the values. So I'm gonna start with X, five, three, seven, nine, two, four, six, and eight. And you do the same with the Y, 20, 23, 15, 11, 27, 21, 17, and 14. And you will see once I've, I'm done with that, then I can just scroll to the left, or oh, sorry, to the right, and there are my answers. There are my answers. Okay, so let's see if I have all the answers that they need. And I make it bigger so it's much better and readable. Okay, so the first one says the coefficient of correlation is 0, it's minus 0, 0,99. Where is my coefficient of correlation? There is my answer. You see how easy it will be. Otherwise, you will need to go and do that on your calculator and enter the data and then go find the coefficient of correlation. So with the template, it can be easy, but you need to know how to use the template. Uh, then what does it mean? The coefficient of correlation is negative 0 0.99. The coefficient of determination is positive. Always the coefficient of determination will be positive because it's a square. That should be correct as well. Um, because also when you look at the answer there, it is positive. The best fit line is given by this. So let's see. Our best fit line 
So we know that 2199 must multiply. So our slope must multiply with an X. So if you look at this, the slope is not multiplying with an X. That is the other thing that you need to pay attention to when you answer the questions in your regression questions. They might swipe around, swap around the slope and the and the, the intercept. So this is incorrect. It should be minus 2.119x plus 8, as you can see, there is the answer. <clears throat> because B1 is minus 2.1, and B1 always multiplies with an x. There is a strong negative relationship. Looking at the coefficient of correlation, you should be able to state that. And the next one, it says uh, the estimate in the connection above the variable are reliable. How do you state that they are reliable? Is it based on the coefficient of determination or the coefficient of R? You can see that it's almost close to R, which is perfect. So the estimates are reliable. The only question that is incorrect is number three. So, and you will notice with the other activities, I'm not going to do all of them for you. You will have to go and practice and try and do formulas following what we have covered. Formulas, uh, Excel, two ways in Excel, because I've showed you the one, the two ways that you can do. So this is the other way, using the template or using the data analysis you will, should be able to get the same answers or using the, your calculator. Now you've got four ways that you can answer correlation questions, also using your calculators. You should be able to know how to answer this question. You should be able to calculate the slope, the intercept, and calculate the coefficient of correlation so that you can calculate the coefficient of determination that you can see there. You should be able to estimate here, they give you 10 years. So 10 years is driving experience, it's X. You need to estimate your monthly car insurance. And how much will it be? You should also be able to answer content related questions where they ask you to interpret your R. So yeah, you need to know your uh, your coefficient of correlation. Um, how how uh, what is it? How do you interpret the values and what does it refer to? And this is one of those exercises. Here, it's where you are not given the data now, right? Remember, you can only use the template if you are given your X and Y value. You can use your calculator if you are given X and Y value, especially the functions. Otherwise, if they give you things like this, they expect you to use the formulas. So you need to know, you need to go and find what is the formula for SSXY and SXX so that you can calculate that. You need to be able to find the, uh, the regression line based on the sum square measure equation. We have done that. The formula for B1 and the formula for B0 to calculate this because you have your sum square measures. So you need to use the formulas. You need to be able to take your regression line and estimate where X is 1.5 to get the value of your Y. You need to be able to use the sum square measures to calculate the correlation of coefficient. So this is very important that you are not only going to be given the X and Y values or two columns with data and ask you to just substitute them into the templates and count. You need to be able to know how to calculate using the formulas themselves. Okay, you need to be able to know how to calculate SST. The formulas are given to you. If it makes it easier when they have given you X and Y, then you can use the template. And this is just the, I'm not gonna repeat that. And this is another one. 
where they just ask you to estimate. So on this one, last one, you don't have to go and do any other calculation except taking the score, substituting into the formula and finding the answer. So they've given you the formula. They just want you to give them the answer. What will be the predicted value? Um, you need to know how to interpret R and R squared in order for you to answer this question. The same applies to the next one, which is this question. And the last one, which is exercise 11 and exercise, I think exercise 12 is repeating, but that concludes today's session. We took longer. Please make sure that you just before you. Uh, please make sure that you complete the register. I've got to paste the register in the chat. Uh, the register is in the chat. Are there any questions? Or comments? Uh, with regard to registers, it's easy. Remember, I was I, I'm not in the, the statistics group now. Can I get it through WhatsApp? Okay. Or can you also add me there in the statistics group? Yes, my phone was lost. Okay, I will check, but I think you are on the group. But I will oh. check. Yeah. Okay, then just as All right. Okay, so if there are no questions or comments, happy lady, see you next week, Saturday. Uh, next week, because we don't, we no longer have anything uh, content related, uh, but I know that some of you are busy with your assignments and I think it should be your last assignment. If you have any question, if you are still uncertain about anything relating to any because we've we now done with content we we are right at the end um it's now preparation for exams so bring those questions bring those uncertainties that you still unsure of like things that you are still struggling with and let's have that discussion for that two hours that we have Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Lizzie. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy as well and everybody.